Hi, this is Laura Davalo, and I'm thrilled to be back for another tutorial. A couple of weeks ago, Stephanie showed us how to use the new interactive swing dynamic set. If you haven't watched her video yet, check it out for an amazing introduction to these dies. Today, I'm going to show you three more ways of using them. The first example features a pendulum motion. When we move the card ever so slightly, the unicorn and the fairy rock back and forth. It's a very simple card to make, but there are a couple of tips that I can share with you, so let's get to it. I've already prepared some of my elements, and you can check out the description box to see the products as well as the measurements for each card. I chose Distress Oxide inks for a soft background and embossed the sentiment in platinum. I also previously stamped, colored and die-cut the unicorn and the fairy from the rainbows and unicorn set, and now I want to cut the mechanism piece out of acetate. This material can be difficult to work with due to its slippery surface. Sometimes the dies won't cut all the way through, like in this case. Sandwiching it between two sheets of printer paper before running it through the die cutting machine does the trick. Here you can see the perfect result. Now let's glue the two circle pieces together with some glossy accents. We can align them perfectly either by using another die cut element as a template or with the help of the grid. The next step is to grab a ruler and a pencil and find out where the center of our card panel is. Here's where we will glue a spin and slide disc and cover the whole thing with these clouds. I like to use a nail file to sand the pieces a little bit before adhering them. Sometimes I'll use liquid glue and sometimes score tape. But first let me erase those pencil marks. Just a little tiny drop and now I'll hold it in place for a couple of seconds while it dries. To attach a penny to the back of the fairy I'm using two layers of score tape. And then I'll use another strip to adhere the penny to the acetate element, which I already trimmed a little bit. We don't want it to be very long since the penny is heavy and the acetate is a little bendy. I would even recommend layering two strips to make it sturdier. After gluing the unicorn to the mechanism with a strip of double-sided foam tape, it's time to attach the cloud to the spin and slide disc. I've added a couple of thick foam dots to the sides of the clouds. These will also act as stops so that the elements won't move too far in either direction. Everything is looking good, so now we can adhere this to our card base. I really should have done that before adding the mechanism, but I didn't think of it at the time. And here's the last picture of the finished card. I added a couple of pink and clear rhinestones in strategic places away from the mechanism. Okay, let's move on to card number two. As you can see, it's quite similar, although in this case, instead of hiding the mechanism and placing it vertically, I incorporated the triangular element and converted it into a seesaw. I'm not going to show the complete process of this simple card, since it's so similar to the first one, but I do want to show you how I did the partial die cutting. To the left you can see the original size of the element, and to the right the resulting shorter version. To cut my template, I first adhered the die to a piece of paper with some washi tape. Then I ran it through my die cutting machine, but placed the upper cutting plate away from the edge of the die. I then detached the die and used the previously cut groove to move it a little bit. I taped it and ran it through the machine again, making sure to only cut the tip of the element this time. And that's it, piece of cake. Now that the template was ready, I cut two same sized elements in a GIF, although I later decided to add another layer to make it sturdier so I ended up cutting four of these. After decorating my panel, oh, frankly I could have done a better job, let's just call this a prototype, I figured out where to place the center of the seesaw and marked it with a pencil. This time I did remember to adhere the panel to the card base before building the mechanism. 
So just like in the previous card, we need to glue the spin and slide disc into place and hold it for a moment. It's important to add foam tape to the triangular element in such a way that the seesaw can move without tilting too far. Try it out before attaching it to the panel. And then add the medium sized circle on top. The last step was to attach pennies to the back of the cute critters and to glue them in place. And here's a close up of the finished card. Okay, one more to go. It's a fun slider card in which three elements move at the same time. I've taken advantage of that versatile die with grooves to insert two owls from my beloved Forever and Owlway stamp set, as well as a snail from the You Know Me set. As before, I've already prepared my elements and I'm only going to show you the most important steps. I temporarily adhered the panel to my card base in order to cut a semicircular notch in both of them at the same time. I just grabbed my 1 inch Fiskar punch, but you could use any circle die for this. And no, the image didn't freeze, I'm just taking my time to get it as straight as possible. And now I can trace the outline of the bush or treetop with a pencil so that I can cut the three slider grooves for my critters later on. I also need to trace the shape of the inner flaps. Did you notice that one end of this die looks like a slider groove? We don't even need to do any fancy die cutting for this card. Just run it through the big shot three times. Like so. Now we can temporarily adhere the animals to their hiding places with some washi tape and start assembling the mechanism. I have left the measurements of all three cards in the description box. Let me just erase those pencil marks before moving on. So now I'm also adhering the slider panel to the back of the main panel so that I can add some strips of tape on three of the four sides. Here I'm cutting a piece of foam tape into four thin strips. It's really easy to do with a craft knife and a ruler. And since my slider panel is not budging thanks to the washi tape, I can adhere the strips with no problem. The lower edge is all cut up, but it doesn't matter. Just go ahead and add foam tape to it as well. The treetop also needs some foam tape around the edges. I'm almost working out of frame here. Sorry about that. I hope you can still see what I'm doing. Okay, it's time to glue the spin and slide discs to the slider panel with some glossy accents. I'm looking at the stamps to know at what height I need to do this. We don't have a lot of margin for error here since the slider grooves are quite short. In this type of card, all three elements are going to move the same distance. Now we can get rid of all the washi tape and add the final touches to the card. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and as always feel free to leave any comments or questions and I'll get back to you. Have a great day. Bye bye. Hasta luego.